Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, I'm back out on the road again. Today is Friday. You guys will probably see this on Saturday. Well, everyone's stopping. Nobody's moving, so I'm going. <laughs> Let's talk about stops again. I thought we were over this, this topic. But I did have a couple of people say you need to stop. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I've already said that before. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, it's the law. I know. <laughs> you don't need to remind me. I know. But uh, if there's nobody around, okay, I'll blast through the stop signs after slowing down. It's just the way it is. Like right here. There's absolutely nobody to the left or the right. So doing a full stop is difficult for a bike, especially this bike. I'm back on the, uh, the Velatric uh, Thunder One, which is a class one bike. Yeah, try starting this bike up from a dead stop. It's not easy. You gotta push off, <laughs> gotta lower down those gears, start it back up, change the gears, <laughs> go down about a block or two, stop again and do it again. <laughs> because there's so many stop signs in this area. Now the stop signs, of course, they mean something. It's there to keep you safe, it's there to keep the other people safe. But if there's absolutely nobody around, in cars at least, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do it. So don't remind me because I don't wanna keep talking about it, quite frankly. So. So what's on, the, what's on the agenda today? Well, I've got to ride the bike. <laughs> I've got to find out what the, uh, the total range is. You'll see that on another video. But again, so as to not to dilute that other video with other topics I'm gonna to talk about, I figure I might as well take this bike, talk about stuff I wanna do for the other videos. And at the same time, we get the results at the end of the day or the end of multiple days. Well, how did this uh, bike do so far? As you know, I stopped at about 75% of battery power and it was showing that I had done, I think it was like 9.8 miles, just shy of 10 miles and used about a quarter of the battery. Now we all know that, that, uh, that doesn't mean anything because sometimes these things will plummet at the end of the uh, battery life so you don't really know I mean it's not linear is what I'm saying I mean if you extrapolate it out I should be doing close to 40 miles with this but I seriously doubt we'll get there <laughs> you don't know <laughs> maybe it will so but as we said last time this bike requires me to ride like a regular bike, essentially. And it's very difficult for me with, with a replaced knee that is not strong. Now, you all know that my replaced knee has been a while. What's it been, three and a half years now? Yeah, my knee has never really gotten that strong after it was all done with. So, uh, I'm just lucky I'm able to actually bend it to about 120 degrees and get about zero degrees of flex of, of uh, extension. So, uh, but the the strength isn't there. Never has been. And this is why I still use a cane going up and down the stairs because it's just easier for me. You know, th this way I have uh, I have a, a railing to hold on to, and then I have a cane to hold on to. So I have support on kind of both sides. And that helps me uh, move up and down the stairs a little bit faster. I also took my mobility scooter on my recent trip to, to California and to Las Vegas. It's a, it's, a, it's a hassle. Yeah, I know it is. It's a hassle for my family as I'm scooting along and they're walking. I mean, oh, sure, they're tired from their walking. <laughs> I'm not really tired after scooting. 
but uh, it's a hassle for them to have to deal with me because I got to take elevators, I've got to take ramps, you got to find where the ramp is in the casino, you got to find where the elevator is. So yeah, it, it's kind of a kind of a pain to deal with a guy like that. So uh, so yeah, having having some type of handicap is not a not a, not an easy thing for you. It's also not an easy thing for your family and friends who are with you. So I appreciate them for putting up with me. So what about bikes? Let's talk about bikes. That's why you guys are here, right? Actually, it seems like whenever there's a video that's not specifically about bikes, of course, uh, less people watch that. But uh, yeah, sometimes you just want to make a video about everyday life, right? It's okay every now and then. What do you think? <laughs> I don't think it's, it shouldn't bother that many people, but sometimes it does. Little things bother people. <laughs> Not stopping at the stop signs bother people. Um, I, I've heard it all. You know, it's like, uh, you know, you're an influencer. You shouldn't. You should be putting a better example. I try my best, folks. I really do. But that's the one thing I really can't do. I can't be hopping off the bike, starting up again, trying to get some momentum with the bike because of pedaling and. I, j I just can't do it, especially with this bike. On the other bikes you could, but you know, it, it eats into your battery. Yeah, your battery life suffers a lot when you have to start up. You, you eat more battery power starting up your bike. Yeah, a lot of us actually used our throttles to start us up and get us moving. That's what I do. I know that's what my wife does. She pedals everywhere she goes, but when she starts up from a dead stop, she hits the throttle, gets herself moving. A lot of us do that. Well, that's eating into your battery. So your range is suffering because of it. Do that enough times, it's, it's gonna just, it's gonna hit your range quite a bit. So thank you for those who have, uh, who've reminded me to stop, but I, ju I just can't do it. Locally here too, there are many folks that do it worse than me. Okay, they don't even slow down. At least I've, I've been trying my best to remember to slow down as best I can. Like, let's say here, there's absolutely nobody here. All right, let's stop. Let's wait to see how long it takes before somebody comes by. I can tell you we'll be waiting here forever because there's nobody around. <laughs> so to me, oh, let's get started. I gotta push off and start up again, lower my gears. <laughs> To me, if I had to stop like that on every, every other street almost, because there's so many stop signs around here, it is just too much. I wouldn't want to ride their streets anymore. Okay, so then ride the paths, right? Well, <laughs> then they'll say, you can't use your motorized vehicle on our paths. You can't win. <laughs> well, maybe I'll do it again and somebody will give me a free bike. <laughs> Y'all know what happened the last time, right? <laughs> Yeah, last time I did that was at Bussy Woods, right? Lady yells out, you're not allowed to be on here. Motorized vehicles aren't allowed. Oh yeah, technically there's a motor on the bike. But those signs were, were made for uh, gas motor vehicles like motorcycles and things like that. So uh, <laughs> they haven't updated the signs, but they have updated their website to reflect it. People don't know that. And so when that happened, Kyle from Area 13 saw it, put it on one of his videos, and says that he liked it so much he gave me a free bike. Yeah. Yeah. He sent me a Area 13 Blackbird, which I like a lot, by the way. And let me say on this bike, that is a... That is not a cadence sensor <laughs> on that bike. Nope, it's a torque sensor. So why don't I get rid of that bike since I was saying how, how difficult it was to ride this bike. Well, there's torque sensors, then there's torque sensors. On that bike, when I torque sensor that thing, I still move pretty good pace. Not so much on this bike. Because on the other bike, 
I still have a throttle. <laughs> so if I'm tired from the, from the riding and pushing hard, I can let the throttle help me along. Can't do that on a class one bike. There is no throttle. So <laughs> there's a difference. Now, let's talk another thing. Somebody said that they've noticed that more, uh, more bikes are coming out with torque sensors. That's true. <laughs> I don't know if it's a trend though, but I, I have noticed a lot of the new bikes have torque sensors. I was offered a bike today that's uh, a new model coming out. Looked really nice, it's a torque sensor on it. I had to turn it down. <laughs> and, and I explained that, you know, with my knee and everything and my weight and the like, I says, I, I just can't, I can't pedal it. Now they have a, th a throttle along with theirs, but yeah, I just, I just didn't see it. I mean, without giving away all the details of that bike, because it hasn't been released yet, it's a brand new model. Um, everything it said sounds good for the average person, but it just doesn't work for me. And this, and this is what people have said. I mean, take a look at my speed. I'm doing 10 miles an hour. <laughs> this is what people have said is that when these bikes come out from manufacturers, they go with what people say that they like, think it's the best thing. So, you know, everyone's talking torque, sens ten torque, uh, <sighs> torque sensors. And, and uh, so they respond and they, they give you a bike like that. But what about guys like me? Guys who are overweight, guys who are, uh, they've got problems with either hips or knees or something. What about us? <laughs> if every bike came out as a torque sensor bike, because that's the new hip thing to do, I think they'd see that they'd be losing some sales to, uh, to guys like us who don't typically want the torque sensor. Yeah, people have asked me about the hub motor. I have my, I have my reservations about that too. I mean, sure, it's not the same thing as just a torque sensor. I mean, it's a whole different thing, but you, you got to put some effort in that hub motor. You got to pedal it right. You got to shift correctly, or you can wreck up your gears. There's, there's a lot of things that people think that they want, but in reality, based on their abilities, may not be the right thing for them. You see what I'm saying? Let's talk about motors too while we're at it. <laughs> we're talking about everything. Um, everyone wants these big powered motor bikes. A lot of people have asked me to check out the Wicked bikes. Uh, I think they changed the name. Did they change their name? I think they did. Well, that bike company, it's really close to me. I'm, I'm not kidding. They're in a couple towns away from me. <laughs> so very easy for them to give it to me if they wanted to. And a lot of people said, you should need to check that bike out. Well, if they give it to me, I would, but I'm not gonna go out of my way and try to get one. And, and here's why. Let's just turn here, I don't want the dog there. Uh, it's a powerful bike. Now, everyone knows I like to go fast, but I don't want to go crazy either. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, these bikes that have more than the 750 watts of power, well, we know that these 750 watt motors sometimes peak higher, right? Some will peak at 1,000, some will peak at 1,200, whatever it is some 500 watt motors will peak higher. So I, I think I have one that's 500, peaks at 900 watts. Okay, but it's a, seven, it's a 500 watt motor. It does 28 miles an hour. So why not get a more powerful motor? Okay, I don't know if this guy sees me. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> he saw me at the last minute. So I stopped just in case. I don't wanna get run over, right? So, uh, um, where, what was I talking about? Okay, um, yeah, more powerful motors. Why don't you want one of those? It eats into your uh, range. Yeah, the more powerful motor basically means you need more, uh, more current going to your motor to run it, right? So here I would stop because there's a car and there's a stop sign, so I stop, okay? We'll turn left here. 
So, and this bike really, uh, really drains me. <laughs> um, I, I do feel the help, okay? I'm not saying there's no motor help, there is. But uh, I have to pedal it all to get it. Let's go back on the trail. So, <laughs> I gotta take it easy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kill myself on this thing. Uh, you get a more powerful motor, you go faster, you go up hills better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, what do you, you, what do you gotta pay for for that? You gotta pay by cutting down your range because it's gonna use up more of your battery. Okay. So nothing's free. <laughs> Something gets you something at the expense of something else. And uh, to me, the range is very important. Probably even more so than the speed. If, if I have range anxiety where I feel that I'm not going to make it home because the battery is going to be dying out on me, that's more scary to me than not having a bike that can go faster. You, you know see what I'm saying? So. Whenever you think you need something, sometimes you really don't. Sometimes um, it's not necessary a lot of times, or not necessary most of the time. Sometimes you do. I mean, there's times that you kind of feel like, well, if I'm in a tight situation, I like to be able to get out of it fast. Well, yeah, okay, there. <laughs> then I would wish I had the better motor, right? But for the most part, a typical ride, you might not need all that, is what I'm saying. So look back on your own situation. Think about the stuff that you have. Are you happy with your bike? You think you need to upgrade? Why do you think you need to upgrade? Why do you think that's necessary? Okay. Kind of analyze it, see if it's really necessary. I've kind of kind of come to the conclusion that, you know, when I first started out with my bikes, I had the Rad Rover 5, they claim 750 watts. That's their peak power. Truly, I think they do have a 500 watt motor in there. A lot of people believe so too. And if you take their motor out, it's about the size of a typical 500 watt motor, okay? You take out a Bafang 750 watt motor, it's a lot bigger. So unless they had some way of developing a, five, a 750 watt motor that looks the size of a 500 watt motor, <laughs> And nobody else has have it. Nobody else has it, something like that. Then uh, okay, there. <laughs> but uh, more often than not, that's not the case. So uh, I even saw an ad running. Somebody put an ad together asking whether the Rads have 750s or 500 watt motors in their bike. I, I can't believe they put an ad out like that on YouTube. <laughs> and that Rads not getting all over them about that. But anyway. I used to think, I need a true 750 watt motor. Okay, <laughs> why did I need that? I wanna go faster. Okay, there, there's a reason right there, okay? So once I had bikes that had true 750 watt motors, I kinda noticed, hey, I can't go so far on this bike. <laughs> why is that? Well, that 750 watt motor is eating up more power, right? You need the 750 watts, you're gonna need to pump out more current to it and everything. That's gonna eat up all your range. Why do I have the Rad Rover 5 as my long distance bike? Because I have two triangle batteries in it, right? I keep one in the rear rack and I put one in the triangle of the bike. Those two, uh, I, I, I upgraded it to 52 volts, 20 amp hour batteries. Those two 20 amp hour batteries allowed me to do over 60 miles and I'm a heavy guy, and I'm throttling and pedaling like crazy. Pe mostly throttling. <laughs> okay, not mostly. Let's, let's say 60% pedaling, 40% throttling when I go to that 60 plus mile uh, ride to the Botanic Gardens. Uh, that's a 500 watt motor that peaks at 750. Why can I get the range? Because it's not eating up all the power. You see what I'm saying? Sure, I can't do the 28 miles per hour on it. I can only do 25 when I need it. Sure, it doesn't move as quickly as some of the other bikes. <laughs> but I got range. See? So, whereas you might think you need it, 
you might not really need it. And uh, getting it might actually be a detriment if, if the distance was a factor for you, if that was the most important thing, that bigger motor would be a detriment to you. It wouldn't, it wouldn't really be uh, a help in that sense. See what I'm saying? So you got to really kind of analyze these things. And I think it's kind of hard for like a first time buyer of an e-bike to know that. They may say, ooh, that bike's got a thousand watt motor, 1200 watt motor. It's got so much power, I want that one. Yeah, you gotta wonder, do I really need that one? Do I really need that much power? Am I, am I willing to spend more money for more batteries? Or am I willing to go for less distance just to get 1200 watts out of something that I can just, you know, hit the throttle and that thing will just take off? Uh, if, if that's the main purpose of your bike, then yeah, go ahead and do it. But if your main purpose is, hey, I wanna go places, I wanna, I want to do things. I want to go some distance. I want to. I want to do that 30-mile ride, and get 30 miles to come back home. Well, then you got to start thinking: Is that big, powerful motor really the right thing to do? You see what I'm saying? So, anyway, think through some of these things before you go out and buy your next bike or your first bike. You know, do some research. Anyways, if you like this video, I appreciate you watching and sticking around with me as I'm going through this uh, this range test for a Bellatrix. Where am I at? I'm at 64%. Man, I got a long way to go. Yeah, maybe we'll make another video while we're in the middle of riding. I mean, I either sit there in the studio and talk to you and show an old video or I take this bike, keep riding it and talk to you. I think I'd rather ride and talk. Anyways, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys next time.